Okay guys, so today I'll be talking about Mood Audio Player, which is a beautifully looking audio player for Raspberry Pi. This is going to be quite long video because I'll go with you through the entire installation, through all those features and also we'll see how it looks as a user interface on multiple devices. Then we'll go through some particular settings which I recommend to do and I'll be using for myself so you can see how it works. Later on I'll be saying basically my conclusion what I like and what I don't like about this player. This is a first one from the series I'll be uh, reviewing other popular players for Raspberry Pi. Later on I'll be doing some comparison and also there will be a dedicated video for Raspberry Pi as the cheapest possible audio streaming player. Okay, so I'll be doing a review of the latest release, which is 6.71. All right, so first thing uh, what we have to do is obviously download the image, the ISO for the flashing of the system. I'll be using Rufus. You can use something similar like Balena Etcher, but I, I prefer Rufus. I'll be using Rufus. I'll be using a bit larger SD card because I would like to use my SD card also as a storage of my music. For the actual streaming music service for this demonstration and for this review, I'll be using uh, Tidal because that's what, uh, what I pay for, a Tidal master quality subscription. We'll see how it works. Uh, I'll show you obviously also other options mood audio offers as a player the possibilities how to stream directly to the player so let's go through it as you can see the iso is around 1.5 gigabytes and around 3.8 gigabytes when it's unzipped which is quite large iso in comparison with other players that i have tested so far so let's flush it I'll, I'll speed it up so you don't need to wait for the actual flashing. Okay, so we just booted up our Raspberry Pi and then uh, here we can see how Mood Audio actually looks like when you first boot it up. The interface is very clean, straightforward. You can see that on the left side we have a playlist with the possibility to remove items. We have a search option through our library. Then we have small help on the right side saying that when we click on the cover we go directly to a library okay all right so on the right side we can see the small m like mood audio player logo that's a main menu so let's go through a configuration some configuration first so we set it up correctly for our use and needs. As you can see, we have some shortcuts. We have some four main sections, library, audio, network, and system. So let's go through the system first. As we can see, we have some general options like changing time zone, host name, keyboard layout, or title, and system modifications related to Raspberry Pi. We have the option to switch off some adapters, even LEDs, as you can see, I recommend to switch off uh, anything, everything what we want to use. In my case, I won't be using Wi-Fi, I won't be using Bluetooth, so I'll switch that off. I'll switch off also HDMI port. Here what I would suggest is, I would prefer if each section had some kind of bellow button to save the option for a particular section of the setting. So we don't need to do it one by one. Just a suggestion, not obviously a big deal, but it takes more time. Okay, now I'll be talking about the last uh, from this section, and that's the expansion of the root partition, which is useful for someone like me. If I'll be using a bigger SD card and I want my local music files to be actually place on that SD card so I don't need to use any external drive and attach it via USB to my Raspberry Pi. So thanks Mood Audio for that convenient button. 
That can take time, so let's do it. Uh, depends obviously on size of your SD card. My card is 128 gigabytes. Well, that was really quick. Restart is required. Makes sense. So I'll get back to you when it's rebooted. Okay, so we are back. So let's go through some other setting configuration options. Let's go to library first so we can set it up and see what are the options. So as you can see, we can create and select music source, which can be external hard drive or NAS drive, I believe. Then we have an option for music database to regenerate, clear the tech cache, even regenerate album covers. Okay. We can also see what already has been processed. Let's go to audio section, which is the most important for the output. So we have an option to select GPL audio interface hat. As we can see, there is a huge support of devices currently on the market. We have some driver options also. So we can change and max alsa volume. Okay. Um, as you can see, the compatibility with Moot Audio and the devices on the market is quite impressive. I can see all Allo, Hi Fi Berry, Just Boom. Very impressive. Okay, I believe you'll find your device there for sure. Okay. So now I'm looking at some MPD settings. There is a possibility to attach to a Raspberry Pi USB volume knob. So you have an um, option to set it up. Volume step limits. The steps are possible to change. Okay. I can see crossfade. Um, options. Volume can be controlled by software or hardware that I forgot to mention. I will go through it a bit later on uh, in further settings in MPD section. Okay, we can set up some EQs if we would like. And most important section for the streaming is obviously renders. We have a Bluetooth, so I won't be using Bluetooth because for me, obviously, it's the lowest quality option in this particular case. And then we have a compatibility with AirPlay, Spotify, and also Squeeze Lite, which is just the renderer. It's not Logitech Media Server included in it, so it doesn't stream to itself like other player I tested. All right, so as you can see, there's a native compatibility with some particular music services. For me, the most important section will be UPnP because I'll be using Tidal. How it works in Mood, there is no native support for Tidal. So we have to use another application on a mobile, which will connect with a Tidal. And then from there, I can send stream from my mobile to Mood Audio. Um, those particular playlists or tracks from Tidal. I'll show you how to do it. What is interesting here with Mood Audio is that we still have to put in our login details, which I kind of don't understand why it works like I think it works for a reason, being as a renderer, so even the application on your phone can actually see Mood, not just as a client, but also as a server but the usage probably will be limited. As we can see, we have a support for different stream quality here. The highest for title is called Flag Lossless, which I'm not sure if it's just 16 bit 44 kilohertz or if it's going to be some kind of uh, possible unfolding and will be able to stream a master quality MQA files. We'll see how it works. But that's the maximum quality we can set set it up. That I'll show you later. 
you can see a support for Obus. So again, you have to put in your login details and you can set up your streaming quality. Google Play, there is also a support, but we have to install manually API. Okay. All right. So let's see other options. Network section, that's just in a case you would like to use as an access point. Mood. Uh, that's back in the system config. Okay. Well, I have been already there, so okay. Now, what I need to set up now is my output device. I'll be using a USB attached DAC, uh, which will be a SMSL IQ. So we have to go to MPD config and select our output device. So it's the SMSL IQ USB DAC. All right, there are those other two options by default by Raspberry Pi. Obviously, we can send the sound via HDMI, and also there is a 3.5 millimeter jet. I'll be using for this demonstration software volume control, but I recommend hardware for the highest possible quality. I use personally software control for background listening when I don't care and, uh, and it's not so critical listening. Now there is an option for resampling, which is controversial and will be controversial uh, topic for a lot of people. I don't believe there would be some improvement. I tried a couple of times and I never could hear any change in quality. Okay, we have an option to volume normalization. Uh, again, that's something I don't recommend, I don't use. I like to keep my source untouched. So any, I don't use any EQs and any normalizations, nothing like that. But if you like, you can do so. So it doesn't bother you that each song is mastered in a different loudness. Okay, so I recommend to restart Raspberry Pi because we have done a lot of changes. So I recommend to do a restart. Okay, sometimes it takes some time. I mean, depends again on the speed of your maximum speed of your SD card. For me, it's around 40, 50 seconds when uh, that's how much it takes to reboot my Raspberry Pi with Moot audio player. Okay, so we are back. So now let's try and copy some local music, local stored music from my laptop to a Raspberry Pi. You can see Moot already on the network, so there is no Samba activation needed. It's activated by default. So let's see what we can see when we open it. Okay, so we have some folders. I'll be using SD card folder, which should be for sure dedicated to a root partition, which we extended to a maximum size of my SD card. So I'll be copying all my music files for this test here. Again, the speed depends on your speed network, on your SD card speed. Um, but in my case, no matter what I tried, the speed doesn't doesn't increase 35 megabytes per second. Nothing slow, but also nothing fast, but something I can live with. Usually you do it once. Okay. Okay. So now, let's go to a library, and as we can see, nothing is there. All right, so what we have to do is update the library, so Mood can actually see it, all the files we copied in that SD card. 
And as we can see, we can see just a couple of them. So what we have to do is rebuild the music cache library. So we have to do again to a library section in our configuration and a regenerate music library. Okay. Depends how your library is big, can take some time because it's rebuilding the metadata, art covers and everything. Okay, now we should see everything. Okay, perfect. Those are all the test files I copied. Let's go to album view. Here, for some reason, all those album covers are in a low resolution. Which I don't know why by default it reads such low resolution. Maybe for the speed, I'm not sure. Let's try and go to appearance settings and change that. Okay, so I think it will be in a sectional library. And I see there is a high res thumbnails option, which I will change to a maximum resolution, which is in this case 400 pixels. Okay, update. And nothing changed. So I believe we have to go back to library section in settings. And there was an option to rebuild the covers thumbnails then I think it should be in a higher resolution. But let's have a look now on the tech view of library when you can see. Okay, I just wanted to try if I'll switch back if it changes. No, it doesn't. It doesn't recently added. Okay. Okay, this view allows us to see alphabetically sorted uh, our music band genres, artists, and albums. Okay, can be useful. I prefer the album view. It's more simple, straightforward for me, visually. Okay, so let's go there. Okay, as we can see, when we mouse over an album, we have an option on the left bottom corner to add or play directly the particular album show tracks. And when we click on the album, it will be played and added to a playlist. All right, I really like the simplicity of this player and the clean look and the adaptive coloring when the background is always trying to match the background of the cover. All right, as you can see below the cover we could see the metadata and also the quality of the stream, the bitrate and what kind of file that is. In my case it was a flag. Okay, so now let's try some other songs, other tracks, and uh, let's have a look how it looks as a user interface on mobile and also on a tablet. All right, as you can see, the adaptive background works beautifully on uh, mobile. Again, I can see, you see the album resolution is very low. Overall, the buttons at the bottom are quite small but still working on mobile I still can get immediate response from a button I'm trying to press. Overall it's fast, no delay. Okay now you can see how it looks on a tablet. It's 80, 80 inch tablet with an HD resolution. What I found on a tablet of this screen size and a resolution that some of those buttons doesn't react immediately. Sometimes they do. Sometimes mood is confused and doesn't do anything, especially in a full screen mode when you try to pause track or 
skip to another track. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I still would prefer those small buttons like the shuffle and full screen to be a little bit bigger. And when you go to the actual full screen, even those buttons on the left and right should be a little bit bigger. So it's more responsive. That's just my suggestion. Because sometimes it gets annoying when you press and nothing happens. The whole button highlights and it, it doesn't work. You have to do it again. Then it actually reacts. And so that's what I found about mood. On a tablet, on a phone, I never had a problem. Okay, so now let's try to use UPnP application on my phone and stream Tidal to Mood Audio, as that's the only option how to do that, as there is no native support from Mood for Tidal or Obus. So I'll be using application called mConnect. Okay, you can see it sees Mood Audio as a UPnP renderer, so we have to select and we will go and access my title library, like playlists or my mixes. It works fine. I use this application because that's the only application at the moment who supports high-res files, master quality MQA files as a UPnP client. Let's try one of them, which is a track from London Grammar. As we can see, it's 24-bit MQA original. And we are streaming that file to Mood Audio. Right. Seems the output is recognized by Mood. Shows 24-bit flag. So I believe that's how it works also on a desktop with a native title application. When it's basically, if you don't have MQA uh, DAC, what it does is a first unfolding and it seems it works pretty fine. Okay, so let's do some conclusion about Mood Audio Player. Well, overall, I would say it's a really beautifully looking audio player with a lot of features, which I believe a lot of people will appreciate. I really like the adaptive uh, background, uh, which looks really nice. I like overall, as I said, the interface because it's very clean, straightforward, that I like. What uh, I don't like is uh, sometimes, as I said, on my tablet, some of those buttons are really small and mood sometimes becomes confused what I want to do. There is no response because it's just too small. That's one thing. Another thing for me, major thing, is the native support for Tidal. I think for quite a long time, a lot of people have been asking for, for that. I don't know if it's difficult from development point of view to do. But still, I believe there is a lot of people around the world using Tidal. It would be highly appreciated by everyone if we finally can get the native support. Otherwise, I think it's a really good player. I'm really happy uh, with the response. It's fast, there is no lag. What I also noticed is the temperatures on Raspberry Pi with Mood Audio are really lower than on other players I have tested for some reason. It means that the resources are useless. And so it's also a plus. So overall, yeah, I like it. Please go on uh, Mood Audio website and uh, if you like the player, if you like their work, just uh, talk to them. They have a dedicated forum. Talk to them and donate because this is mostly a community work. Basically, this player is free for, for everyone. So let's be uh, thankful for their work and let's appreciate the work in a way of some donation that I suggest. Thank you for watching.